you like this gingerbread colored yarn, you're going to need three skeins of this pretty color. So you can see how I had fun with this color, the different pinks, and this is the back color change seam. For this one, I made 43 rounds, but if you use the container, then I only made 39 rounds for the ones that I used with my container. So if you're going to use craft stuffing in yours, I'm going to show you how to close it. So just take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off after you finished the rounds for the body. And we're going to make decrease rounds. For the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches. And when I mean decrease round, I mean you're going to be decreasing the number of stitches in the round. So one single crochet into seven stitches. And then after you finish one single crochet into seven stitches, you're going to make your decrease stitch, or it's also called single crochet two stitches together. So just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decrease stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into seven stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Now you should have decreased to 48 total stitches in the round. Then move your yarn marker up for the next decrease round. For the next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. Or a single crochet, two stitches together. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you can go ahead and put your craft stuffing into the body and you can always stuff more as you close. Be careful that you don't overstuff and stretch the crochet holes. You want just enough stuffing to where you don't do that. Then you're going to take and move your yarn marker up for your next decrease round and for this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around. Then you just keep decreasing in chronological order. So we started with seven, one single crochet into seven and then your decrease stitch, then six, then five, then four. Now I'm on one single crochet in, on, in three stitches and then a decrease stitch and I'm repeating that pattern all the way around. Then you just keep continuing one single crochet into two one single crochet and then a decrease and then come back. So now this is what my work looks like after finishing one single crochet in one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. So now you're just going to take and move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make a round of single crochet two stitches together. So you can see how I'm just making decreased stitches all the way around. Then you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and I'm having trouble making the decreased stitches. So I'm almost closed. I'll make one more, the last one. And then I'll remove the yarn marker. And actually, I won't make one more. I'm just going to slip stitch it closed now. So now you can skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a slip stitch. And you're just going to slip stitch around until the body is closed. 
So I'm pretty much closed. I'm going to make one more. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. So you're just taking yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you just take and cut the yarn to make a loose yarn end. Then just take your tapestry needle and put it onto the loose yarn end. Go right in where you finished off and come out anywhere. And then that just buries your loose yarn end. And go ahead and trim the loose yarn end. Then you can take and line up the head on the front of the body. Make sure that the nose is facing straight and it's not crooked. Then you can take your tapestry needle or darning needle and then just go in and out sewing all around the base of the head and securing the head in place. And then as you're sewing just make sure that your nose is facing in the direction that you want. And then I always double check the nose as I'm sewing, making sure that it's still facing straight. And then you just take and sew the head to the body. And this is what mine looks like after sewing the head on. And now we're going to make the feet for your dog. Now with the feet you're going to start with the magic circle again and you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle just like we've done before. Then you're going to turn your work and this time you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So two single crochet into every stitch around for a total, total stri stitch count of 12. Now we're going to make our increase rounds in chronological order all the way up to one single crochet into five stitches and two single crochet into the sixth stitch. For the first round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then just like we've done before just move your yarn marker up and then the next increase round will be one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and remember for each increase round we're going to stop once you get to one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. Then after you finish your increase rounds you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. So only one single crochet in every stitch for one round. You should still have a total of 42 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up and we're going to single crochet two stitches together. So you go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, then go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat this until you get to the halfway mark. So I'll show you one more. You're going to single crochet two stitches together and then that's my second one. For mine, I made 12 
single crochet two stitches together so I have 12 of them and then I'm going to make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker then just take and move the yarn marker up and this time you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around so only one single crochet in every stitch around then continue making one single crochet in every stitch around until you've com completed a total of four rounds and this is what the foot will look like you have just a slight formation of the paw and it's a short stubby little foot then you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over and then go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the foot onto the dog so you're going to need four feet or four little paws just like this one after you finish all four of the legs or paws, then take your tapestry needle or darning needle and put some craft stuffing into the paw. Then you're going to line up the paw. Make sure that the paw is facing forward and find the center of the bottom of the, the body. And then line up where you would like the front feet. And then once you have the front feet in a position that you want them on the dog, then you're going to sew them in place. Just take your tapestry needle and sew all around the base of the paw. Just go in and out. and sew all the way around. You can go around more than one time to make sure it's secure. This is how the front feet look and now you're ready to sew the back feet on the exact same way and this is what it looks like for the back legs. You can see how I lined it up with the back brown portion of the body and they're also in line with the front legs and this is what he looks like standing looks adorable. This is from behind and the other side. Some stuffing right there and the front. If you like the scarf that I made for my dog, I used Yarnspiration's Karen Big Cakes and here's some information about this yarn. It's some of my leftover from my Crochet Heavenly Blessing scarf set and this color is the Plum Pudding. These are the pretty colors in the plum pudding skein or cake. So for the scarf, go ahead and take whatever color yarn that you want for the scarf and take the yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook. I'm still using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Go through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. And then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make a chain of 12. There's one, two, three, four. Go ahead and finish your chain of 12 and then come back. Now just hold that last chain with your middle finger and thumb and then you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch that you're holding. Go ahead and yarn over, go into the stitch that you're holding, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops. You have two loops remaining. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops. Then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, 
and then make your double crochet. I'll make one more with you. Yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then complete a double crochet. And then you're just going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. You should have a stitch count of 13. Then to move up to the next row, you're just going to chain three. That counts as your first double crochet for the next row. Go ahead and turn your work. And then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch over, which will be directly over the previous row's double crochet. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then finish a double crochet. And then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. And then you should have a stitch count of 13 when you're finished. So if you're a beginner, just double check, make sure that you still have a stitch count of 13. Then go ahead and chain 3 to move to the next row. So we're working on our third row. Go ahead and turn your work. And then you're just going to repeat. You're going to make one double crochet into the next stitch and every stitch back across. So you're going to go ahead and repeat this until you get the length that you want for your crochet scarf for your dog. When you come back I'll show you how long I made mine. For mine I made 30 rows total and then I just finished off and then just bury your loose yarn ends. So this part is optional. I took these adorable Dutch and Dog pins by Metal Gallery and I used those on my dog. I'm going to use the blue one for the blue scarf and then the pink one for the pink scarf. If you don't want to use the pin and you just want the scarf then you can make them a little bit longer. So you would make it this is with just 30 rows, so you would make it as long as you want so that you can tie a knot around the neck. So if you're using the pin, I just folded it in half and then just put it around the dog's neck and then pulled it slightly. And then I'm just going to pin it in place. And this is what it looks like after I pinned it in place. Make sure that you double check the length of your scarf before you finish off. For my pink one, I made 50 rows instead of 30 for the shorter one. So make sure that you have the length that you want before finishing off. This is what the scarf looks like when you, chain, you make 50 round, rows. So you see that you get a little bit longer length with the 50 rows. And you can still put the pin on if you want. I'm still going to put the pin. And this is what it looks like with the pin in place. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own little bow clip. I use these clasps or hair clips from Boutique. It has four pieces. And when you choose your boutique hair clip, make sure that you choose one that's slender like this one so it can fit through the crochet holes. 
To make the bow, I used my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Go ahead and get whatever color yarn that you want for your bow. Now you're going to take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around the hook. Now go ahead and make a chain of five. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to make a slip stitch into that first chain that you made. So go into that first chain and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to go into the center of the circle and bring up a loop. Then make a single crochet, just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a single crochet. Now you're going to chain three. One, two, three. This counts as your first treble crochet. Now you're going to make four more treble crochet into the center of the circle. So yarn over twice, go into the center of the circle, bring up a loop. Now you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops. You have three loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops. You have two loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops to complete a treble crochet. Now we're going to make three more. So yarn over twice, go into the center of the circle, bring up a loop, make your treble crochet. So now I have one, two, three, four, five treble crochets. I'm going to chain four. And then you're going to make a slip stitch into the center of the circle. And then you have a total of six treble crochet on one side of the bow. Now you're going to chain four, one, two, three, four. That counts as your first treble crochet on the other side of the bow. Now you're going to make four treble crochets into the center of the circle. Then you're going to chain four, and then you're going to make a slip stitch into the center of the circle. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to make the center of your bow. So you're going to take, you have a short loose yarn in, you're going to leave that in the back to the side. You can hold it too if you want to. Then take the longer loose yarn end that you left and start to wind it around the center of the bow. Just to cover up the hole that's in the center of the bow, then you can take and straighten out the sides of the bow. Then take and turn your work over and tie a knot on the back with that loose yarn end. And then that secures the look of your bow.
then your bow is ready to place onto the hair clip. So make sure that your bow looks pretty, straighten it out, and then take your hair clip and then you're going to take your hair, find out where on the top part you're going to be placing the bow. So take and place the bow on top and then you want to take and hold the loose yarn end to the side and then take that long loose yarn end and you're going to wrap it around the teeth of the top of the hair clip just around the center and then you can take and tie a knot so take that loose yarn end that you are holding you can go ahead and close the clasp and then take that loose yarn end, the smaller one and take and tie a knot. Try to make the knot on the back portion. And then you can take your tapestry needle and then you're going to open up the clip and take your tapestry needle with the loose yarn end and just go right through the back portion of the clip where you wrapped the bow onto the back, the top of the clip. And then just take both loose yarn ends and bring them through the back of the clip to kind of bury the loose yarn ends. And then you can take and trim those loose yarn ends. Make sure you don't cut the back of the bow, just the loose yarn ends. And then you have your little bow that's ready to be placed onto the dog. So here you can see where I already made one bow clip. I'm just going to take and position where I want it on the other side. So you can see how I'm just going to take and clip it where I want it, right through the crochet stitch. And now you have your cute little bows in place. Another fun thing you can do is place the bow clip onto the back of the body. So that's another option. Or you can just buy your bow clip too. They have some cute bow clips that you can buy. This one is actually a pet hair clip that's removable. Now if you want to try the Yarn B Cloud 9, and I chose the mushroom colored yarn, here's some information about this yarn. This yarn is a little bit more difficult to work with. Here is 251 yards, and again it's the mushroom colored Clown 9, and it's by Yarn B. So whenever I use this style of yarn, I always work it a little bit differently because similar to the Pipsqueak yarn, it's hard to see the stitches while you're working. So instead of the magic circle with this style of yarn, you're going to take the yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop, then you're going to take your 6 millimeter crochet hook and then go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then loosely place the loop around your crochet hook and you're going to make a chain of two. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one Two. Then you're going to take and make six single crochet into that first chain that you made. So take your crochet hook, go into that first chain. You're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to make a single crochet. 
and try not to make your stitches too tight because it's going to be hard to see the stitches as you're crocheting. You're going to go into the same stitch, you're going to bring up a loop, and then you're going to make your second single crochet, and you're going to make six single crochet into that same stitch. So as you can see, it's difficult to see the stitches. So just make sure that you're not making your stitches too tight. So this is four. Five. And six. Now, just like you did with the magic circle, you're going to be making two single crochet into every stitch around and you're going to try and get a stitch count of 12. So you're going to go into that first stitch and again you're going to grab both loops and it's hard to see the stitches so you're going to go where you think the stitch is and just make two single crochet and then you're, you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around and again you're not making very tight stitches and you're going where you think the stitch is it's okay if you don't get exact stitch counts when using this yarn so you're going to keep making them until you think you have a stitch count of 12 and then come back so now I think that I have a stitch count of 12. I'm going to get my yarn marker and place it right where I left off. And now you're going to be making two single crochet into every stitch around until you get the size that you want. And you're going to try to keep track of the stitch count. So for my increase rounds, I just make two single crochet into every stitch around until I get the size that I want. So when you come back I'll show you what stitch count I had. So you can see how it's difficult sometimes to get into the stitch. So you just go right where you think the stitch is and Instead of going into chronological order with the one single crochet and then two single crochet, for these increase rounds I just make two single crochet in every stitch around until I get the size that I want. And when you come back I'll give you the stitch count that I ended up with. So again, you just make two single crochet into every stitch around and then you just keep moving the yarn marker up to help you keep track of the stitch count and that's how I increase the size using this style of yarn so again when I reach my yarn marker I have my stitch count then I move the yarn marker up and then I continue with the next increase round by making two single crochet in every stitch around and that's how I increase the size for the head. So when you come back I'll give you my stitch count for where I finished the size that I want for the head. So now you can see how I made it larger and larger using the two single crochet in every stitch around until I get a stitch count of approximately 54 which is the same stitch count that I had using my regular acrylic yarn and you can see how they're pretty equivalent in size so now you're just going to take your yarn marker place it right where you left off and you're only going to make one single crochet into every stitch around and with this style of yarn I usually just make sure that I keep track of the stitch count 
and try to maintain a stitch count of 54 each time I pass the yarn marker. So, so far, far I have four. Five. So I'm trying to make one single crochet in every stitch around and at the same time I'm keeping track of my stitch count. I want to try and keep it 54 each time I pass the yarn marker. So one of the things that I do to help keep track is I know I should have 27 stitches by the time I get to the opposite of the yarn marker. So if I need to add a stitch then I would make two single crochets into the same stitch to increase my stitch count by one and then just continue making one single crochet and keeping track of the stitch count each time I pass the yarn marker. So this is what my work looks like. I have 11, approximately 11 rounds that I made and then I just turned my work around and then using my magic circle on the top as a landmark, I counted down about seven, seven rounds, and then approximately five stitches between the eyes, and I angled the eyes slightly outwards. Now you can see how I made it consistently as far as the stitch count in the rounds. Now did I have exactly 54 stitches for each round? I didn't. I had, sometimes I'll have 50, but I never went over 54. Also I paid attention to what the sides look like as I was crocheting around. So if one side looked like I had too many stitches, I would make one single crochet in each stitch and then add two single crochet and stitches on the opposite side to keep it consistent as I crocheted around and keeping the stitch count under 54 but as close to 54 as I could. And you can see that those tricks that I used worked with this style of yarn. Then you're going to take and move your yarn marker up for your first decrease round. For your first decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches. and then you're going to make your decrease stitch. So you go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop, next stitch over, bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. Then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So for mine, when I got back to the yarn marker, I had made one single crochet into seven stitches. I'm going to go ahead and end with a decrease stitch. Then I'm going to move the yarn marker up to where I left off and this time I'm going to make one single crochet into six stitches. And then I'm going to make my decrease stitch and I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and it should be getting smaller and smaller for the opening for the neck. Again, when I reached my yarn marker, I went past the yarn marker to get one single crochet into six and then my decrease stitch. Then I'm just gonna move my yarn marker up to where I left off. And then for this round, I'm gonna be making one single crochet into five stitches. and then I'm going to make my decrease stitch. And then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. This is how my work looks so far. You can see how it's getting smaller and smaller, which is what you want. Then for our last decrease round, again you can see how I passed my yarn marker to complete the decrease stitch. Then just take and move your yarn marker up and this time 
you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then make your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So this is what my work looks like so far. Then you can see how I passed my yarn marker to complete the single crochet two stitches together or decrease stitch. Go ahead and remove the yarn marker. Then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over and then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the head onto the body. And now we're going to make the snout. I made the snout and the ears the same way. I increased to 36 stitches in the round and then I tried to maintain the 36 stitch count for the length that I wanted for the snout and I'm making my snout the same length as for the regular crochet yarn that I crocheted for the dog and then I did the same thing for the ears. This is what mine looks like after I finished and for this one because I'm using a larger crochet hook and the different yarn I only needed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds for the snout. Then you can see how I sewed the bottom of the snout first approximately three to four rows up from the bottom of the head and then I sewed the top portion. The whole time I'm keeping the nose straight then I'm going to finish sewing the sides.